Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So in this video we'll be seeing another geometrical locus type problem. And if you haven't seen the video where we went through the theoretical uh, understanding of these uh, geometrical type locus problems, I suggest you go back and have a look at that video so that you have a better understanding of the examples. Okay, so in this example, it says, find the locus of Z if the argument of z minus 1 over z plus 1 equals alpha, where alpha is pi on 4 and minus pi on 2. So we have two different cases we want to look at. Alright, so let's have a look at the first one. Okay, so in this video, in, in, this, uh, in this question, we're looking at the argument of z minus 1 over z plus 1 equal to pi on 4. Okay, so this isn't quite in the standard form that we saw in the video where we went through the understanding of the locuses of these standard forms. But we can change this quite easily so that it matches uh, a standard form. So we recognize that the quotient here, this quotient, so we have an argument of a quotient, that's equal to the difference of the quotients. And so we can write the problem, we can rewrite it in this way. So now we have a standard form which we recognize as the arc of a circle. Okay, so there's one more step that we can do to make it more clear. We can write this as the argument of z minus 1 minus the argument of z minus, and here we have a minus 1, equal to pi on 4. Okay, so now I've just written it like this so we can see explicitly uh, the points that we need to focus on. So if you remember back to the uh, theoretical video, this represents the arc of a circle, which starts at the, at the complex number z uh, 1 plus 0i and ends at the complex number minus 1 plus 0i. And here our angle is positive, so we know that this arc goes in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so let's have a look at it uh, on the Argan diagram. Okay, so this is what the locus looks like. This red curve is the locus of Z. But let's get a bit more of an understanding here. So we're starting at this point here, which is 1, which corresponds here. So this is the uh, complex number 1 plus 0i. And we go anti-clockwise until we get to the complex number minus 1 plus 0i. Now this here is a major arc of a circle, and we know it's a major arc because this angle is pi on 4. This angle here is pi on 4. So what does it mean to be pi on 4? Well we said that this angle is the angle that this chord here subtends on the circle. So we can have a look at any point on this curve. Let's pick any point. Let's say perhaps here. Now we can draw in angle, an angle that is subtended by this arc that joins the two ends of our arc. Right, so this is our angle here, pi over 4. All right. Now we want to work out, well, let's just assume we want to work out the center and radius of this circle. Now there is an algebraic method which I'll show in the next video because I think it's important to see the algebraic method. But if you don't necessarily need the algebraic method to find the center and the radius of the circle. So if any point on this curve has this property here, that the uh, angle subtended by this chord is pi on 4, then let's choose a very specific point. Let's choose this point here, which as you can see is exactly halfway between these two points. Right, and let's do the same thing. Let's draw a full line so we can distinguish between the two. Okay. So we have this triangle here. 
Okay, and this angle is right here, pi on 4. Right, so this angle in here is pi on 4 degrees. Now you should uh, think that this is the angle at the circumference, subtended by an arc. And so you know by your circle geometry properties, one of the circle geometry properties, one of the first ones that you learn, is that the angle at the center, subtended by an arc, or by a chord, it's the same thing, is equal to twice the angle at the circumference. So since this is the angle at the circumference, the angle at the center should be twice this value. And so if this is our center here, then we can consider this triangle right here. Okay, so now we have this, and this is twice this angle. Well, this angle here is pi on 4, which is 45 degrees. And so this angle is twice that, which is 90 degrees. So here we have a right-angled triangle. Okay, so now that we have this right-angled triangle here, we can work out what the center and the radius of the circle is. Okay, so to work out the center of the circle, this is what we do. Let's uh, take out this triangle here and draw it uh, separately. So, this is what our uh, triangle is. This is this triangle. So we're considering this triangle, right? So this point here is going to split this angle in half. So this angle was pi on, uh, pi on 2, so now it would be pi on 4, or 45 degrees. So here we have a 45 degree angle. And since this here is a right angle, by the angle sum of a triangle, this is also 45 degrees. And so we have an isosceles triangle, where these two points here, uh, these two sides, rather, are equal. Now, we know that this here spans across uh, one unit, since this point here is the complex number uh, 1 plus 0i. So here we have one unit, and because it's an isosceles triangle, this is also one unit. So if this is one unit here, and we said that this point right here, which corresponds to the top of this uh, triangle, if this is one unit up, then the center of our comp of our uh, arc, the arc of our circle, is going to be the complex number 0 plus i, or just simply i. So therefore our center is i. Okay? Now, how do we work out what our radius is? Well, this is just going to be simple Pythagoras theorem. So our radius, which is going to be here, this is r, so from the center to a point on the curve, which is r, our radius r is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the other two sides, which is root 2. Okay, so our radius is root 2 units. Okay, so that's the how we work out the locus of this one. So as you can see, it, it requires a bit of knowledge of your circle geometry and simple geometry using triangles. All right, let's have a look at the second part. Okay. So, the second part is argument of z minus 1 over z plus 1 equals minus pi on 2. Okay, so remember, we can think of this here, put it into our standard form. It's going to be arg of z minus 1 minus the arg of z minus a minus 1 is equal to minus pi on 2. Okay, so here we still have an arc 
of a circle which starts at minus 1, or rather, sorry, starts at 1 plus 0i and it goes to the complex number minus 1 plus 0i. But here this angle is negative. And so instead of going in the anti-clockwise direction, we're now going from 1 to minus 1 in the clockwise direction. So let's have a look at that on the argument diagram. So we're starting here and we're going clockwise in uh, from 1 to minus 1. Okay, and we can do a similar thing here. So this chord that joins these two points, it subtends an angle of pi on 2. And once again, we consider the special case where it's halfway between. So we consider this point and we draw in our triangle. So we have this case here. And this angle is pi on 2 or 90 degrees. Okay, so there we have our 90 degree angle. Now, it's a, a circle geometry theorem that if this angle here is a right angle, then the chord that it's being subtended from is a diameter. So, what does that mean? Let's write that down. The chord... chord joining the points or the complex numbers of 1 plus 0i and 1 minus or minus 1 plus 0i is a diameter. of a circle and the reason is since it subtends a or an angle of pi on 2 or 90 degrees at the circumference circumference. Okay, so we know that this here is a diameter. So if this here is a diameter, well now we have a semicircle. Okay, now once again, let's assume we wanted to find out the radius and the center. So this one's a little bit easier to find the radius and the center than in the previous example. Well the radius is half the length of the diameter. So what's the length of the diameter? Well that's one unit across here and one unit across here, which would be two units. And so the radius, again, is simply one unit. And the, uh, the center now, well, the center is the midpoint of the diameter. So the midpoint of minus 1 plus 0 i and 1 plus 0 i, well, that's simply the origin. Okay, so we have our center is going to be the origin. Or you might say 0 plus 0. Alright, so there we have the radius and the center of this locus here. Right, and that's how you solve these locus problems using a geometric approach. So in the next video, I'm going to show you just the first part. So the case where alpha was pi on 4, I'm going to do that using an algebraic approach so you know how to solve those and get the Cartesian equation of the locus of your, of your curve, of your point Z. Okay, so thanks for watching the video and I hope you learned something.